welcome back to Zoo School Live. We're so excited to have you joining us yet again um, for another fun day of animal learning. Today we're going to be learning about invertebrates and what that means and how you can tell it's an invertebrate. Um, but first, of course, we wanted to do a little bit of a shout out. We got some amazing artwork from Danica in Fairless Hills. Oh my goodness, look at that art. I am absolutely in love with Sydney's representation here. It's perfect. Um, so we are so excited to continuously be getting your fan mail. Again, please send in all your projects and pictures, um, videos, whatever you guys decide to do at home when you're inspired by learning about our animals here at the zoo. Uh, we would love to see those. So again, please feel free to send those along to uh, education at elmwoodparkzoo.org um, or, or you can even mail it in to us as well. Uh, so, my name is Marissa and I'm going to be your educator today. And with me, I have an eight-legged friend. Um, her name is Rosie and she is a rose hair tarantula. So before you sign off immediately, I have some amazing cool facts to tell you about Rosie today. So be sure to hang out and uh, listen in because I have some fun things to tell you about Rosie, our rose-haired tarantula. So first and foremost, you guys can, are getting a really good view of her right now. And I want you to take a look at kind of the bottom part of her body here. And you can kind of see that, I hope you can see it at home, it's a little bit of a pink color. Um, and rose-haired tarantulas, they can vary in their specific colorations. Um, but Rosie here, she's not quite as pink as some of her, her counterparts may be. Um, but for Rosie here, she is in fact a rose-haired tarantula, meaning that she is a little Little bit pink and that's how she gets her name. These guys are actually called uh, Chilean rose hair tarantulas um, because these guys are native to Chile um, and other a few other South American countries so these guys really like it um, down in South America and you can kind of see she's doing a really good job of hanging on to the side of this uh, this little box that we have her in today so she's her exploring box and so for her, she's doing a little bit of exploring herself and she's doing a great job holding on, um, which is what our tarantula friends are exceptionally good at. Now today we are learning about invertebrates and to give you a little bit of an idea, an invertebrate is an animal that lacks a backbone. So I want you guys at home to reach around and feel your backbone because chances are you can probably feel it. So I want you guys at home to, to reach back and feel your backbone. It might be a, like a hard spot on your back, should be right in the middle. Um, and that is one of the major differences between our invertebrate friends and us. So for our friend Rosie here, unlike us, she does not have a backbone at all. So instead, her body is covered in an exoskeleton. So that's a pretty big word that just lets us know that she's kind of covered in a suit of armor. So yeah, you might be picturing a knight in shining armor right now, and that's kind of what this is like. She's just a little furrier. So for our friend Rosie, she's covered in the suit of armor that we call an exoskeleton. And that suit of armor is gonna help protect her, um, and it's gonna help her grow. So you guys probably have met some of our snakes that we've been presenting recently, and some of our animals that we have here, but snakes in particular, they will shed their scales, right? That's something that we learned before. So when they grow bigger or when they're older and they just want to stay nice and clean, they're going to shed those scales off. And that is what um, is going to help them grow bigger. Now, Rosie here, when she grows bigger, instead of shedding off her scales, she's going to do something that we call molting. So she's actually going to molt her exoskeleton. So to give you a little bit of an idea, I actually have a molt here. Now it's a little old and it's a little beat up, but this is a molt from a tarantula. Now, what our friend Rosie's gonna do is she's actually gonna turn upside down when she is about to molt, right? She's about to shed that exoskeleton and she is going to pull all of her legs out of these little holes on the inside. And it's kind of tough to see, I hope you guys can see that, but there's all these little holes on the inside where her legs came out of 
right? So this is an old exoskeleton. So what they would do is she would have, she would have laid on her back and wiggled out all her legs and she would have came out of this exoskeleton and she would have had a nice shiny new one underneath, which is pretty cool. So now we don't do a lot of handling with our friend Rosie the tarantula um, just because she's not the biggest fan of being held and we want to make sure that she's totally comfortable. But so you guys can see, I think that this is really cool. This is a molt from one of our other tarantulas that we have here at the zoo and you can see those shiny black fangs, which is pretty awesome. So since I'm not going to turn Rosie upside down, she's not the biggest fan, um, but you guys can probably see these large black fangs here were from one of our other tarantulas that we have here at the zoo. Now we only have two tarantulas here at the zoo. We have Rosie and then one of our other tarantulas who's actually on exhibit here at the zoo that when you guys come to visit you'll actually be able to see her. She lives in our wildlife lodge building. Now Rosie is what we call an invertebrate right because she has a she does not have a backbone she has an exoskeleton um, but a lot of times people call her an insect and we're going to talk a little bit about the difference between an arachnid and an insect. So our friend Rosie, the rose hair tarantula, she is in fact an arachnid. So when we think about arachnids, we're talking about animals with eight legs. So can you guys count all of her legs, right? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if you look, you might even notice there it looks like there's two little mini legs in between her two front legs. And those are what we call pedipalps. So they're not actually legs. She does not have 10 legs. She only has eight. But she uses those pedipalps almost like an insect would use antenna to feel around and to look for snacks. So you might notice she might even try to dig in the dirt with those pedipalps, which is very cool. She's looking for some snacks maybe. So Rosie here, right, she's an arachnid, which means she has those eight legs, which we just counted, and she has two main body parts. So when you look at Rosie here, and you can see, and I even have a little uh, fake tarantula here. This is one's not real. <laughs> um, but we have the top portion of their body here, which is their head, and their upper body, which we call a cephalothorax. And then the bottom part of her body, which is considered her abdomen, right? So she has these two main body parts. I mean, you can see those pedipalps here too, and then those eight legs. Um, so our friend Rosie, she has that too. Can you guys tell where her cephalothorax and her abdomen are? Now, if you're talking about an insect instead of an arachnid, you're probably talking about bugs, right? The most of the time, what you would consider to be an ant or maybe a bee, and those guys, they actually have three body parts and they have six legs. So a little less legs and a little more body. So for example, if we're talking about perhaps um, a bee, right? If you're looking at, and I have a picture of a bee right here. So when you're looking at a, a bee, you're gonna be looking at those three body parts. So they have a head, thorax and abdomen, right? So they have those three parts. Some insects even have wings, um, and they're only gonna have six legs. You can only see the three legs on this side, and then he's got three on the other. So our, that's our main difference between our, our arachnid friends and our insect friends. Now Rosie here, um, we believe she is over five years old. I don't know if we actually have an exact age on her, um, but she's been at the zoo for quite some time. And the only way that we really know that she's a female is because she's, I believe she's actually six years old. So she's about five or six years old. And one of the only reasons why we know that she's a female is because she's actually lived to be that long. One of the major differences between males and females is that the male tarantulas act and especially for our male rose hair tarantulas male rose hair tarantulas only live about three years so our females are going to live upwards of like 25 years so rosie has quite a long life ahead of her so she has a long way to go being only five to six years old and she is definitely doing a great job of exploring her habitat today. And you can see she's kind of using her legs to feel around and to feel kind of what, they're, what she's experiencing, what she's walking around in. And she's going to be using those legs to help her feel around for food too. So our friend Rosie here, she is a carnivore. So she will not be eating any vegetables, nothing like that. She's mostly going to be eating live animals, right? 
For someone like Rosie, she's a pretty small tarantula. She weighs about 27 grams, and for you guys at home, that's about the weight of a slice of bread. Um, so that's how much she weighs. She's very lightweight. And so she's gonna be hunting mostly insects, um, smaller insects, maybe even smaller tarantulas. She gets lucky or big enough, she may possibly eat something like a small rodent or a lizard. Um, but for the most part, she's definitely uh, only gonna be eating uh, smaller than her creatures, right? Probably some other insect animals. Now, Rosie here is one of our ambassador, ambassador animals here at the Elmwood Park Zoo, um, and she does a great job coming out to teach people about how amazing even some of the animals that we might be afraid of are. So for me, even as an educator, when I first met Rosie, I personally was a little bit nervous because spiders make me a little bit nervous. But just because you're nervous about an animal doesn't mean you can't learn more about them and learn to appreciate them and respect them too. So even though I might be a little nervous around spiders, my friend Rosie here taught me that it's really important to, uh, to make sure that we're still respecting our animals. It looks like David um, is afraid of spiders too. Oh, David, same. What is that called? So we actually call that arachnophobia. So when you're afraid of an arachnid, right, like our spider friends, we call that arachnophobia. So me too, right? I'm a little afraid of spiders. But Rosie here is really interesting. So David, I'm really glad you tuned in today to learn a little bit more about Rosie, right? Because that is one of the best ways to overcome some of our fears is just to learn a little bit more about them. Well, guys, I'm so glad you guys joined us today to learn more about Rosie. We're going to answer some questions now. Um, and so we're going to go ahead and get started with some of our questions. Elijah wants to know, oh, how often does she molt? Great question, Elijah. So our friend uh, Rosie here will molt probably once a year, right? And she's full grown, so she probably won't get any larger than this. Uh, but for her, she's gonna molt once a year, at least just to keep herself nice and clean and healthy, right? Um, so another thing, if you look really closely on my friend Rosie here, you might notice that she looks a little furry. Now, when we talk about fur or hair, we're mostly talking about mammals. But Rosie here is not a mammal, right? She's an invertebrate, she's an arachnid. So for her, she is going to have these things called bristles. So even though she looks pretty furry, those are bristles on her body. And those bristles are gonna be used to help protect her in the wild. All right, so it looks like Austin and Chase wanna know, is her hair soft? Oh, that's a great question. So those bristles are actually, they, they are kind of soft, but they're a little pokey um, and those bristles are meant to help protect her so for her if she feels like there's something coming maybe a bird or maybe a kawada mundi which is kind of like a raccoon in south america and she feels like she's threatened she's going to take those back two legs that she has and she's going to rub them on her abdomen right which is that bottom part of her body and she's going to rub those legs on that abdomen and it's going to poof it's going to send all those bristles into the air and those bristles they're fine when they're on her body but if they get into your eyes or into your nose they can get really itchy it's like having something in your eyes and it's no good and it hurts a lot so that's what's going to help protect her against things like birds or other animals that might want to eat her when she when she flicks up those bristles it's going to get into their eyes and hopefully they'll leave her alone right so she can live another day Oh, Juliana wants to know, can you pet her? All right, Juliana, I can absolutely pet her. Um, and I can hold her if I wanted to. Um, but again, remember, Rosie, she's not the biggest fan of being held. Um, and although she doesn't really like it, she's not super dangerous, right? Even though she has those bristles, they can be a little irritating on your skin. Um, kind of like something a little itchy. Uh, and she does have fangs, right? But she's really only, even though she is venomous, she's really only venomous to the animals that she's eating. If she were to bite, oh, and Xavier wants to know if she does she bite. So she absolutely bites her food, Xavier. Um, so she's gonna bite her food and she's gonna use that venom to help her eat that food. But if I were holding her, right, the only reason why she would bite me is if she got really nervous, right? And so that's why I make sure that I make her as comfortable as possible. But yeah, you can absolutely pet her. Um, and, and you can hold her, um, I just wanna make Sure that she feels comfortable too. All right, so Casey wants to know, ooh, does she spin a web? Oh, Casey, I'm so glad you asked. 
So she doesn't spin a web like you might think, right? Have you ever been walking through the woods or maybe opened a, a door to a shed or walked around and walked straight into a spider web? I sure have. Um, but that's not the kind of web that she's gonna build. The kind of web that Rosie here is gonna build is gonna be on the ground. She's gonna kind of weave it onto the ground and it's gonna be more like a carpet. We call it kind of a mat. And that's going to allow her, once she spreads it all out on the ground, if something at the edge of her mat touches it, like maybe a cricket, she might run over and jump on it. And so for her, she's going to use that mat to help sense her, her prey, right? So she's not really going to build a great big web like some of the spiders we might have around here. All right, Olivia and Luke want to know how many eyes does she have? All right, Olivia and Luke. So she actually has eight eyeballs. Now, unfortunately, even though she has eight of them, they are terrible at seeing. She is not very good at seeing with those eight eyeballs at all. So for her, she's going to be using that sense, right? Those senses, moving around, feeling with her feet to move around and to get around. So for her, she's not necessarily going to be uh, using her eyesight, even though she has got a lot of them. All right, Isabella wants to know how long do they live? So our boy rose hair tarantulas are only going to live to be about three or four years old. And um, our females are going to live to be about 25 years old. And it looks like Sean wants to know how long do they live in the wild? Unfortunately, Sean, probably less than that. So tarantulas have a lot of predators, right? So even though they themselves are also predators, our friend tarantulas can get eaten up by birds and remember coata mundis and uh, some other animals as well. So for them, they are definitely, uh, there's a lot more things out in the wild to eat them up. So in, in a zoo setting, our friend Rosie is pretty safe, but in the wild, they probably wouldn't quite live to be 25 years old. All right, Austin and Jennifer, are they nocturnal? Oh, yes. So these guys actually are pretty nocturnal. Where they're from, uh, they live in kind of deserty areas where it's very dry. Um, and when they come out at nighttime, they're going to see a lot more insects out at night. Uh, so that's when they're going to do a lot of their hunting. Great question, guys. All right, Ezra wants to know, has she laid any eggs? <laughs> Well, Ezra, she has not laid any eggs, and uh, we're pretty excited that she hasn't because she could lay up to 400 eggs at once. Uh, so even though we do love our friend Rosie here, one of her um, is amazing. 400 of her would be maybe a little intimidating. All right, Victoria, what is her favorite food? Great question, Victoria. So her favorite food is actually crickets. Um, which is pretty exciting. So she loves crickets and she's, we're actually able to use tongs. Um, so we have metal tongs here that we use to feed her crickets with. Um, but we actually have another snack for her today. So we're gonna see if she's interested in eating it. Um, today we actually brought her a little worm. Now she's never actually had a worm before, I don't think. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna give it a go and see if she's interested. Um, all right, so we're gonna, we're gonna see if she's interested in taking a worm. And she's doing a lot of exploring right now too, so I don't know how interested she'll be. Maybe we'll just leave that there for her and see if she'll be interested. I think she's doing a lot of exploring right now, so just like you might not play soccer and eat a sandwich at the same time, it's kind of the same idea. All right, so Paige wants to know, ooh, does she eat every day? Paige, that's a great question. She does not eat every day. She actually eats every other day. We feed her one cricket every other day. Uh, so she does not eat every single day because she doesn't really need to, right? And in the wild, she might only eat once a week. Uh, so for these guys, um, we do only feed her once every other day. Great question, Paige. All right, so Augie wants to know, do they swim? Oh, Augie, I wonder, do you like to swim? Because Rosie here does not. She is not a fan of swimming. I don't really even know if she would know how to swim. To be fair, Augie, we've never actually put her in a swimming pool before, so I don't know, but I don't think that she likes it very much. All right, so Jace wants to know, does Rosie have friends? All right, Jace, so Rosie does not live with anybody here at the zoo. She has some frogs as next door neighbors, um, but they don't live in the same house. Uh, they kind of live in an apartment building. Um, so these guys, they do live a little bit separately. So she, although Rosie here, um, she does not have any necessarily friends, um, she prefers to live solo. All right, and Julia wants to know, when is her birthday? 
That's a great question, Julia. You know what? I actually don't know when Rose's birthday is, so we'll have to look into that, and I'll see if I can post it later if we do find out when her birthday is. Heather wants to know, does she drink? She does drink. So we actually, how we give her water is we have a little sponge. So maybe if you've ever had a hermit crab as a, as a pet before, you may have done something similar. We give them a little sponge and we soak it in water. And if she gets really thirsty, she's gonna crawl over that sponge and she's gonna, uh, she's going to drink it up. Oh man, she is pretty awesome. All right, so Casey wants to know, uh, oh, how did she get to the zoo? That's a good question, Casey. I actually believe that our friend Rosie here came from another facility. So I think she came from somewhere else here at the zoo, which is pretty awesome. Ooh, can you have them as a pet? So you can have these guys as a pet. Um, and actually, these guys make a, a much better pet than maybe some other animals that we have here at the zoo, right? Because every pet that you get, it's really important that you try very hard to do all your research before you get the, the, an animal as a pet, right? So remember, Rosie here is gonna live 25 years. So that's a really long time to have an animal. So you can have these guys as pets, um, but it's really important that you know how long they live and what they need to properly survive. So Rosie here, she does not come from a tropical area. She comes from a very dry desert-like area. So you have to know that you can't mist her. You have to be careful um, that she has enough hiding places. And you have to be really informative about how she lives and how she wants to live so that you can be amazing so, uh, an amazing pet owner uh, can you find her around here oh good question I hope not um, so you will chances are you will not find a tarantula like this around here the largest spider that we would get here in Pennsylvania is probably the wolf spider and they get probably about that big and they like to lurk in sheds and um, log piles but Rosie here she's from South America so she's gonna be from Chile and Argentina um, so she's gonna live much further south. We do have tarantulas here in the United States though. Um, they're found much further south, um, not necessarily here in Pennsylvania. They tend to like warmer weather. Um, but it's really important that we try hard to, if you see a spider um, or if you see a tarantula, to maybe give it a second, right? No, a, a lot of times our instinct is to smush bugs, um, but it's really important to maybe learn a little bit about them before you smush them, because they do really important work like um, eating a lot of smaller insects that do carry diseases, right? So it's important to do a lot of learning. Uh, luckily, I think these guys, there's not much known about them in the wild, actually, but habitat loss is a really big thing for them. So they're actually losing a lot of habitat. Um, so it's important that we're, we're aware of our, the animals that live near us and that we do a good job about learning all kinds of different animals. Maybe not just our favorite animals, but maybe some animals that we might not be the biggest fan of. So I encourage you guys at home to maybe research an animal that you might be afraid of or a little nervous about and maybe learn a fun fact about them. Maybe learn something new um, because that's what I did and I ended up really, really loving our friend Rosie here because she's pretty amazing. All right, so one last question from Jackson here, right? When does she sleep? So Rosie here, she sleeps mostly during the day. Um, and she'll be awake at night uh, eating up all kinds of um, delicious insects for her, right? Very cool. I'm so glad you guys came to join us today here at Zoo School Live. Remember, be sure to check out our website um, for more activities you can do. Um, we have some exciting things happening uh, at the zoo too, right on our website. You can, we're having a giraffe a here tomorrow at 2 p.m., so be sure to check in with that. Check out our website for more details about that, right? So since we're closed to the public, we're gonna try to do a virtual giraffe feed, which is gonna be so cool. Um, and we also have a discount on our distance learning. So if you want a, a really cool personalized lesson, um, feel free to check out our website for that too. It's our distance learning program. It's actually, we have a huge discount, it's only $25 um, for an awesome animal program. So if you want to learn more about Rosie or about one of our other animals here at the zoo, you can uh, sign up for one of those as well. But thanks so much for coming out today, guys. Again, keep watching. We're so happy and please keep sending in your artwork. I personally love to see them and so does the rest of our team here. And have a great rest of your day.